Hi everyone, welcome to Mystic PCB's FPGA development series sponsored by Alinx.com. In the previous couple of videos, we have seen how to do read and write operations on an integrated random access memory and how to use RAMs as an read-only memories using block memory generator IP code. We have also seen how to multiply and divide frequencies as per our requirement using PLL IP codes as well. And if you haven't watched those videos yet, you can go to the i button or you can simply access those using link given in the description. Now let's come back to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about buttons, which are an important peripheral in an FPGA development kit. And we are going to simply write a very raw code and connect those buttons to LEDs. So the functional test of the button will be, as soon as we'll press the button, the LEDs should light up. And we are going to achieve that using D flip flops. So let's get started. In step one of this video, we are going to create a new project and add design source into newly created project. I assume that you already know how to add a new project for Zinc 7000 development kit. And I've already demonstrated that in previous couple of tutorials. So I've already created here. And next I'm just going to add the source file. To do that, we'll just click over this add sources from project manager. Make sure you have selected add or create design sources and click on next button. Here we are going to create the file. This is the key demonstration. So we are going to press the button and make sure that those buttons will be connected to each of the four LEDs and then click on OK button and then finish it. Now here it is asking again if you want to add the IO ports that we will define later. So we'll click on OK button and leave those empty. And here we go. The very locked file have been successfully created and we have this empty module which is key here and the time scale directive has been defined as well. Now before I start writing the code, I just want to explain a bit. So for this, as you can see on your screen, I'm going to use two flip flop because when we press the key, there is a sort of factor of debouncing. To remove that, we are going to use first flip flop and then pass the output of first D flip flop to another D flip flop, All right? And then we'll just reflect the position of key on the LED. So the idea is when we'll press the key, the LED should turn on. Next, I'm just going to show you this schematic of the Zinc 7000 development kit. And here we can clearly see how PL keys and PL LEDs are connected. So if we'll go to the schematic, we can see the PL LEDs are connected to those four pins of FPGA from LED 1 to LED 4. And the switches are connected from key 1 to key 4, right? So we have to make the connection between these two. So as soon as the default state of the switches are high or it is pulled up and as soon as we'll press the key, it will be connected to ground, all right? And as soon as it will be connected to ground, as you can see from the LEDs as well, the LEDs will light up. So we are going to just implement same thing in our very lock code. So whatever the state of the switch is, if we'll just reflect or we'll, if we'll just assign that state to our LED pins, the LEDs will light up. So that is pretty much simple. Next, we are just going to write the code. We can start with by defining input and output variables. So in our case, the input will be clock. So let's define our first input. And the variable name will be clock. Or if you want, you can just keep the same variable name as our previous couple of tutorials, which was sysclock. Next, I'm just going to define the another input, which are the switches. So switches, using switches, it is taking user input. So as soon as we'll press that, it will act like an input. And based on that, the state of switches will be reflected to the LEDs, all right? We have four switches. So we'll just define input. Then we have to define all the switches from zero to three and the variable name will be key. And at last we have to define the outputs. So let's select output from here and these will be LEDs. Let's define those with LED. And make sure just close the module definition with parentheses and semicolon. Now after defining the modules definition, we are going to 
define the local variables which we are going to use. And those variables are the flip-flop. All right. So I'm just going to define those with LED underscore one or LED underscore two. All right. So let's define those. And if you know that we define those with registers, so it will be underscore. Let's name this LED one and this semicolon and another will be LED two. All right. Next, I'm just going to write the always block which will execute at each positive edge of the clock. And this will be our first flip-flop. So as we already know about D flip-flops, whatever will be the input of D flip-flop, the state will be same as the output. So input will be is equal to the output and we'll get that at each rising edge of the reference clock. So this was LED one. So as you can see, we have our first uh, assignment here of a D flip-flop which should be same as the key state. And this block will always execute. Next, we are going to write another always block. So the syntax will be pretty much same. So let's type always at positive edge and then begin. And next we are going to just assign LED2 and this will assign from LED1, all right? So we are simply just connecting these two flip-flops as I've already shown you in the block diagram. And then end this always block. And after that, there is final assignment and that will assign the state on the LEDs. So we are just going to do that for all the fours together. And that's why I'm not targeting any particular key. So to do that, we just simply use assign space. Then we'll just update the LED states to whatever the state of the switch is. All right. So LED underscore two. And then at last we have to end the module. And that's pretty much our very log code is ready. Next, we are just going to save it. In the next step, we are going to create the constraint file. And as I've already shown you in the schematic, as you can see on your screen, so keys from one to four are connected to and 15, 16, T17 and R17 in FPGA pins. And similarly, LEDs from one to four are connected to M14, M15, K16 and J16 of FPGA pins. And similarly, the reference clock, which is the PL reference clock, it's connected to U18, all right? So we are going to use the same 50 megahertz clock throughout this couple of tutorials. So we'll just, say, we'll just use it as a reference here as well. And I've already shown you in previous tutorial, if you want to use a multiplied version of reference clock or divided version of reference clock, you can simply use PLL to that. But here it's not required. So next I'm just going to assign these pins to all the IO ports. To do that, we'll just click over this open elaborated design. And here you can clearly see the schematic. And this is what we have expected as per the block diagram, right? So let's go back to IO ports and which we can access by going to windows and select IO port from here. Now I'm just going to assign all the LEDs and switches pin mapping. So LED three is connected to R17. So let's do that quickly. LED two is connected to T17 and one is connected to N16 and these all the pin mappings I got from the schematic as I've already shown you in the previous section. And here we are going to assign it to N15. Similarly, we are going to assign all the four pins to LEDs. I'm just going to do that quickly. And after LEDs assignment, we are going to assign the pin to system reference clock and that is U18. So let's do that. Next, we are going to change the voltages and we all know that for all of these, the default voltage as per schematic is 3.3 volt. So let's assign those quickly and similarly for the sysref clock. And once this is done, we are just going to save the project. Let's rename this E underscore constraint file and click on OK. And if we'll go back to sources, as you can see, the constraint file has been created. Next, we are going to define the timing constraint to the same thing. To do that, we'll just going to run the synthesis. And once the synthesis have been successfully completed, we are going to run the implementation. And after the completion of implementation, it is asking to 
generate the bitstream file or just view the report for now we are just going to cancel that and here in the implementation we are just going to open just click on this open implementation and here we'll find this constraint wizard we'll just click on that now timing constraint wizard will open we'll just click on next button and here we are going to define the frequency of the system reference clock in our case it is 50 megahertz we'll just select that and click on skip to finish here we go let's go back to our constraint file and reload it and we can clearly see the timing constraint has been defined here all right now after defining all the constraints we are going to generate the bitstream file here i highly recommend to simulate this code and i've already shown you a couple of times how to simulate that so I'm just skipping that part because the code is pretty much simple and but it is a good practice to do the simulation. Now before generating the bitstream file, make sure that your development kit should be powered on. So I'm just going to power it on here and it should be connected to in the COM port. Then we'll simply click over this generate bitstream file and click on OK. Make sure you have selected four number of jobs. And it will take some time based on the processing power of your machine. And once the bitstream file has been successfully created, we'll get this pop-up window. And here make sure you've selected open hardware manager and click on OK button. Now after the hardware manager will open, we are going to connect the target. To do that, we'll just click on this auto connect and it will connect to your FPGA development kit. And here as you can clearly see, our FPGA is not programmed yet. Now to program it, we'll just right click here and click on this program device. And as I've already told you, we don't need to set the bitstream path here. So it will select that based on the project location because we are just creating all the files inside the same folder and then click on this program button. So after flashing the program, we are just going to simply press the keys and see if it is working as expected. So we have four keys connected here. And I'm just going to press the first one and it should turn on the LED. So as you can see, the LEDs is on. So as we are pressing all the four buttons, the LEDs are functional. This is just working as expected. And I'm just going to attach the project file in the description. So you can just simply download that. And if you have the same hardware or the different one, you can always modify the code based on whatever the development kit you have. And you can just play along these values and Make sure just make the connection based on the schematic of your development kit. Only then it will work. So that's it for this video. If you have any question, you can just drop your questions in the comment section and I'll reply to those as soon as possible.